step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 64 titled, Stay Tuned as We Unravel Celestial Events and Beyond, featuring Mike from COT on the End Generation Project. Originally aired on April 8, 2024, exclusively on councilloftime.com, see link in description. This episode delves into Bible study highlighting eschatology amidst today's challenges. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore these peculiar circumstances in this riveting episode number 64. To understand more, visit the Council of Time on their only official website linked in description. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction who simultaneously is seeking God's guidance. Your support drives our mission to guide individuals toward truth, sobriety, and preparedness for what is described in scripture as perilous times. Join our exclusive local community for EGP family members and have early access to many cool things. Be sure to check out our new merchandise line where we have many cool gifts and hoodies and posters. Thank you for being a vital part of the success of the End Generation Project. Before we finally get into today's rebroadcast podcast, Stay tuned as we unravel celestial events and beyond. Episode number 64. Okay, now let's celebrate the remarkable growth of our channel, End Generation Project, reflecting the desire among believers for truth in these end generation times. It's truly a blessing to see our content reaching audiences worldwide with translations available in over 12 languages. As we journey together, we're committed to keeping this podcast ad-free thanks to your subscriptions. Join our vibrant communities on Locals and Kofi for prayer requests and shout-outs like you will see in this video. All right, now let's dive into today's podcast. Stay tuned as we unravel celestial events and beyond. Tune in to the rebroadcast of End Generation Projects podcast number 64 with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. today, will it? Well, anybody out there? Today will be the surprise after all. Let's see who's nosy in COT. Let's see. Let's find out. Let's discover. I know some of you guys are waiting for the eclipse. I know you are, but there's a, uh, just a piece, a small smidget of something you might want to know. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let the secret out. It happens during an eclipse. And, uh, in fact, people have noticed quite a few things, but unfortunately, due to the hype of the eclipse, they miss some of the more revealing things. I'm going to tell you guys in just a moment what that revealing thing is. It is one of the only times... Uh-oh. Do that. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I did that right now. All right. So, let's see. I'm going to see who's on, who's doing what. Let's see who's doing what. Might scare some folks. 
Oh, don't mean to scare anybody. I'm everywhere now, now guys. Well, no, not everywhere. Just on uh, Mixler, I did. Uh, I did get Mixler going in in the uh, channel zero, <laughs> COT player, and a couple of channels. Sorry, live right there. I'm gonna let you guys know something about the eclipse in just a few minutes. Something that uh, you guys were in a path of totality, right? Not the, well, it may work in the 90 percentile range. It may, it may, it may be effective there also. We'll see. Today's a good day to observe gravity. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you in a minute. So just hang around for a few minutes, if you would. I'm not going to play any music or anything. I'm going to turn it down, turn the player off right after this. This one, or oh, and if you have animals, right? If you guys live in that path of totality and you have animals, normally during a total solar eclipse, animals start changing, right? Horses may start swaying their heads from side to side because they try to it disrupts their day. They may go into evening activities. Dogs may act a bit frantic, nervous, right? Birds may go into evening song. That normally happens. Of course, when it's over, they go back to normal. They do. They do. They go back to normal. Um, also, the atmosphere, right? We're going to be in the shadow of the uh, moon, right? So the atmosphere will start to instantly cool off. The, the wind may just totally stop blowing. That happens a lot. I mean, it happens a lot. And then you have bands that you can see on the ground, right? Uh, Right when the sun is being covered up, bands can show up on the ground. Now, this is in the path of totality. And, and some of you guys in the 90%, 80%, your animals are going to do the same thing because you'll have a almost like a, a twilight effect, you could say, right? Um, so it works that way, too. Now, those of you in the path of totality, you're going to have a, there's, a, there's an observation you can make uh, for about a minute or two. That is quite revealing, other than other than uh, some of the uh, gases that blow out from the sun that can sometimes cause a pink ring, pink or reddish, purplish ring to form around the sun. There's something that you guys will be able to see. Right now, you know, every day you cannot see what's behind the sun, right? You can't see it. Can't see it. During a total solar eclipse, due to the gravity of the sun. You can then see what's behind the sun. Right? It's going to be totally visible. So, listen, anything behind the sun, at totality, is not going to be hidden. Uh, the light will actually bend around the sun. Right? Those of you who believe in a flat earth, uh, you, you're still going to see it. It's just not going to make sense to you. But the light will bend around the sun. Right? The sun will act as a lens due to the sheer forces of the pull. Right? Gravitational forces are quite strong, and you'll be able to see directly behind the sun. They discovered this a long time ago. It was way back in the day uh, when certain stars and constellations appeared that were behind the sun. You can't see them uh, unless you're in one of those uh, uh, total solar eclipses, right? in that path of totality. And the path of totality simply means you're in a spot on the earth where the moon will cast its shadow directly overhead. Right? So you'll kind of see these little interesting uh, reflections on the ground. Right? Uh, and it, but you also don't need glasses, really. If, if you guys took a piece of metal foil, a tiny piece of foil, and let the sun shine through the foil, and let it shine on a uh, through the foil, right? on a white surface or something like that, you can see. You can actually see the eclipse. You can see that. So uh, that happens. But keep in mind, listen, the atmosphere can instantly cool. We already have some pretty high, I'll say fluctuating degrees of weather above your head, especially on this day. This uh, solar eclipse is already messing with the atmosphere. Already. That's causing... Uh, cooling and heating shears to form in the upper atmospheres. So it will mess with the weather, right? 
Uh, again, when you're in that path of totality, it can cause a wind to stop animals act a little cuckoo, right? And uh, for the most part, that's it. Then it'll be over. One of the more interesting things is you will be able to see what's behind the sun. That's what I wanted you guys to know. Those of you in the path of totality, when the moon totally eclipses the sun, you will be able to see the stars behind the sun. Whatever's behind the sun is going to appear to the, on the outer bands of the sun, right? That's what you'll see. Now, you normally can't see anything behind the sun, right? You, you just can't see it. Um, but you will be able to see what's behind the sun. Now, you, you're not going to be able to see what's behind the sun for another uh, 100 plus or 100 plus days. So keep that in mind, right? So if you want to know what's behind the sun right now today and you're in that path of totality, when, when you're at 100% coverage, when the moon's shadow is over your location, right? And the, it's safe to look at the sun. Um, that, that's at the total eclipse point you'll be able to see what's behind the sun. It's the only time you'll be able to see it. I know that um, they have, uh, lots of people are going to be snapping photos of what's behind the sun. Scientists are looking into what's behind the sun. They have special folks are out there right now setting up everything, making sure uh, they can see what's behind the sun. It is so important, evidently, uh, some of the folks in the, I'm going to call them scientific teams, who found out that they're going to have cloud coverage in certain places like Dallas and things like that, they went to another location, right? And they have spread out all throughout that path of totality to make sure that they can observe what's behind the sun. Now, if it's visible to them, it's going to be visible to you too. So those of you in that path of totality who happen uh, to watch four celestial events and you know what you're doing, get a couple of shots for everybody else so you can share with them what's behind the sun. Right? It is. It is normally not observed. They don't. They never talk about it, right? And I'm telling you right now that um, you're not going to be able to see what's behind the sun for a long time. And if it, if if something was in a tracking orbit with the Earth, you'll never see what's behind the sun. This will reveal it. So don't be shocked when people have reports of moving things. Right? Lots of those are going to be seen. Does those things will be seen likewise? Are all over the place. But behind the sun, you will be able to observe behind the sun. This is the one day they cannot hide it. The one day nothing can be hid. If you know what you're doing, uh, I say that because some people are going to hurt themselves. They will look at the sun too early or too late, and uh, they're going to hurt their eyes. That every single time we have a Solar eclipse, I believe 2017 it happened, 2023 it happened. Over the United States, people hurt themselves. Um, quite a few people went permanently blind. Permanently. So please don't be one of those people. And that happens when you look at the sun too early or too late. Right? So you have to know what you're doing. You have to have uh, special gear. I will not be looking at the sun at all. To me, it's another day, it really is. But for those of you who observe, again, celestial events, this is the one time that the gravity around the sun will be at a, at a, a pretty good degree, right? You'll be able to see directly behind the sun. Behind it. Right? So remember that. No, if you have the right glasses, right? It's not going to bother your eyes. Um, those are some pretty, pretty hefty uh, filtered glasses. You can also, I used to take... Um, a floppy disk, and I'm going to take a floppy disk and take the disk out of that floppy disk and cut three pieces out of there, right, stacked on top of each other. And you can also look at the sun that way. You have to have three layers, though. That would be minimal to actually see the sun. Of course, people don't have floppy disks anymore. That was a um, one of the makeshift type deals. But again, the, the, the reason I'm talking, guys, for these two reasons, number one, the atmosphere could change uh, instantly. Okay, because of rapid cooling, the atmosphere being in the shadow of the sun, that's rapid cooling. Uh, the second thing is you'll be able to observe, right, at, that, at the moment when the moon is totally uh, eclipses the sun, the shadow of the moon is over your area. If you're in those areas of totality, you will be able to see 
what is behind the sun. I can't emphasize that enough. You'll be able to see what's behind the sun. Okay? You have to be in the path of totality. You have to. If you're outside of the path of totality, you're not going to be able to see uh, fully what's behind the sun. It'll have curvature, but that curvature is going to be obscured by a lot of light. If you're in the one of those direct areas of totality, you will be able to see what's behind the sun. Now, this is normally, you can't observe that. You cannot observe what's behind the sun. You can't. And, but this time, you will be able to. Even those objects that are tracking opposite the Earth, okay, you will be able to see it. So, if you are in that path of totality, if you're one of those who has the gear to actually get some snapshots uh, right at the right at the uh, that 100% eclipse point, then share it with everybody else, right? Because it's going to be highly observed. It is the moment when uh, nothing can be hid. Let's put it that way. Nothing can be hid. Right? Somebody says, well, it changed everywhere, just the path of the atmosphere. Well, wherever the shadow is, right? Wherever the shadow casts on the earth. I was going to do a graphic so everybody could understand what's happening during this eclipse. It's, a lot of people say, well, it's just a shadow of the moon. Well, the, sun path, the, the moon passes right in front of the sun all the time. How come we don't have eclipses then? And it has to do with the uh, deal with the angle of the Earth and the Moon, right? Uh, and so I was gonna, I, I may do a graphic anyway to show you guys so you understand that in a very easy way, very easy way, because everybody understands shadows. And so I could show you how that works very simply. It is, it's very simple. But anyway, anyway, I don't want to time your time, guys. If you're in that path of totality, right? Just check and see with uh, NASA is a good resource. You know, the people you don't like, they're a good resource to tell you what time uh, you're going to be at 100%. They're making minute, fine adjustments uh, to their calculations. So they're going to give you some accurate data. Find out exactly when it's going to be there, and you will be able to see what's behind the sun uh, for the first time. For the first time, it cannot be hidden in the uh, path of totality. It cannot be hidden. Okay? So remember that. Also, take take caution, folks. If you don't have the right gear, do not. Please don't look at the sun. Don't do that. Every single time we have one of these uh, eclipses. And remember, we had an eclipse in the United States in 2023 and 2017. People were permanently blinded. Please don't do that. Okay? If, you, if you're unsure, don't look. That, that's my advice. If you're unsure, do not look. If you know what you're doing, then use the proper gear. Do not directly observe the sun. For those of you who are not in that path of totality and you're not around, you know, some of the experts who will say, okay, it's safe to look, right? If you're not around those folks, please don't take a chance. I have an understanding those of you with pets, your pets can go a bit kooky. They can. They can go a bit kooky. And the winds can stop blowing, so don't scare yourself thinking that the world's coming to an end or something like that. Right. We'll have lots to discuss uh, in the next, in the days ahead after this eclipse, right? Those two, uh, by the way, the, from 2023 and 2017, that's two X's over the United States. One of them is very significant. The other one is twice as significant, right? It's quite an amazing thing. I did not want to cover that prior to uh, this moment, right? Because it would have been lost in the noise. But we will cover that. I think it's uh, it's one of those things that the Father sets up at the beginning of time. And then, of course, man ultimately fulfills his and her destiny. Right? They built cities in these places. They built, um, they did certain things in these places. And there's no way it's coincidence. It is beyond all statistical odds, right? Um, it's an amazing thing. People end up right where they're supposed to be, according to the prophecies of the Most High. It's an amazing thing. Again, though, staying on point, staying on point, two things. The atmosphere can rapidly change, right? If you're in that path of totality, even outside, down to about 72%, I believe it is. The atmosphere can absolutely, 100% totally change. It can, it can really be abrupt. <clears throat> Animals will act kooky. They will. Uh, sometimes it bothers animals. Horses seem to have 
uh, want to seek shelter and things like that. So comfort your animals, right? You guys that have animals, make sure you comfort your animals. Um, other than that, it's not going to do anything else. Yeah, I hate to disappoint people. I know that uh, people have come up with all sorts of things. After today, we'll have more discussions on this. I simply can't have discussions when people are um, forecasting a bunch of weird things to happen. You know, um, don't forget, don't forget when you've been, con- when somebody convinces you that something is, is, is going to happen like that, right? Just take a mental note of it because the more you do that, the more you're not going to be fooled by somebody else's nervousness or anything else. I may get nervous one day, say something totally out of line. And if you are sober, you will not be fooled by my nervousness. Does that make sense? Because at the end of the, listen, at the end of the matter, everybody's about to go through some pretty serious things outside of this eclipse. Uh, But people are going to go through some pretty serious things. This is not the moment to drop your guard down. This requires absolute sobriety, but take a mental note of who says what, right? So that you, you can be in a good place so that you can start to filter out some of the noise of the world. Let's go ahead and face it. We're all human. We all have, you know, some sort of idea or speculation, intuition, whatever you want to call it, about things that will take place. Sometimes people get too excited. Sometimes we believe what we've heard somebody else say, right? So when it all passes, just take a mental note, right? Never let anybody work you up into hyperactivities or anything like that. Don't let people do that to you. But one day is coming. When just about everybody is going to be correct in their doom forecast. Take note of that, right? The darkness is on its way. We're not talking about the eclipse, but the darkness is on its way. And uh, just because, you know, this eclipse is going to throw people off that path a little bit, don't please don't let it be you. Don't let it desensitize you to the prophecies to come, to the things to come, to the changes to come. Right? Be sober, be alert, be astute, and take a mental note of uh, you know some of the excitement. A lot of this excitement is unwarranted. I'm just being bold and saying that. A lot of people, they don't know. I kind of trust what the Lord gives me. And so when, uh, that's just where I am with that. Right? Uh, but, but never let anybody else work you up into this uh, anxiety that the world seems to get. Uh, Christians get a lot during moments like these, right? Don't do that. Because your father will never communicate a lie. The Holy Spirit is always right, never makes a mistake. But we ourselves, we feel a lot, right? We do. Human beings, we feel a lot. And we're prone to say anything during a time of nervousness. So just take a mental note, right? Take a mental note so that you can be sober and so that you can start tracking the real things. Right? Now, not... Uh, falling for somebody else's emotional uh, stimulation by these things like this. This, No doubt the Lord set up these times and seasons. He did. But if you're not careful, you're going to listen to the wrong people, right? And they're going to get you off the path of what the Lord has, has, has actually signified with the event in the first place. You'll start believing what, you know, mankind is saying, and you'll never know what your father had to uh, sign for in the first place. But believe me. Every single celestial event, every single one, every single eclipse is, is noteworthy. It is. Every single last one of them. It's just that mankind likes to throw their imagination into it, right? And that's what you have to learn to stay away from, especially when you want the truth about something. You cannot dive into imagination and speculation. You can't do that. And you can receive the truth of the Lord, but that can be drowned out if, t- if you listen to too many other people's opinions. Some people right now, I guarantee you, some people right now are nervous because of what somebody else said. That's why I did not speak about the eclipse at all. Did you notice? I didn't cover the subject. I didn't speak about it at all. But, but keep that in mind. Everybody keep that in mind. Now, listen again, just to, just to tell you guys this, right? If you're in that path of totality, the atmosphere can change instantly. And your animals can act weird. They will act weird. Right? Uh, please don't look at the sunlight before or after the event. Right? If you don't know what you're doing, don't look at all. You're not going to miss anything. For those of you who observe these celestial happenings and you know what you're doing, 
It is the number one chance to see what's behind the sun. Light will be bent around the sun, a gravity well, if you will, around the sun. Light will be bent around it. So anything behind the sun, you'll be able to see it at totality. You have to be in that place of totality. Uh, you, anybody else is not going to be able to see what's behind the sun. They're just not going to be able to see it. So in, in, for about two minutes or a minute and a half of your time during this eclipse, if you know what you're doing, you will finally get to see what's behind the sun. If, in fact, anything is back there, it's going to be visible, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Other than that, we'll discuss some of the implications following the eclipse. After the eclipse is over, right? After the, you know, all this, these forecasted things don't happen. Um, I know people threw themselves a safety net. A lot of people are changing it now. They're saying, well, you know, 40 days after the eclipse. That's what they're saying. That's a safety net. But, uh, folks, just be careful not to do that. Because if it's one thing that gets me is this. When, when, when you're living in this world, the one thing you don't want to have is useless information. Especially when you're, it's a life or death situation. Things are incredibly serious. Things will be life and death and we certainly don't need imaginative things all over the place, right? So we have to stay as sober as possible. Just take note that people are going to get nervous. They're going to come up with all sorts of things to interpret whatever they interpret, right? Um, just take note of that. Take note of where it came from. Learn to be sober. Learn to walk in a type of peace even in the middle of mankind's storms please learn to do that so that when the moment really counts you will absolutely be ready right please don't be desensitized to prophecy if you're one of those who believed in somebody else and whatever they said does not come to pass don't be discouraged by that all right some people are just trying to give you the best they can give you it just so happens sometimes their ideas don't match up with you know, what's going to happen? We all do that from time to time. But make sure you stay sober, right? Make sure that your mind is, is, is on receiving from the Lord in those things that never fail. Because the Holy Spirit is never wrong. The Holy Spirit speaks nothing in error. There is no mistake. And you can bet your soul upon whatever is communicated by way of the Holy Spirit. It is perfect in what it states what it communicates. We are the ones who mess everything up. Okay? That includes me too. Don't you hinge, please don't hinge your future on these, uh, some of the wild sayings of, of people who speak by emotion. Anybody can speak by emotion when they get nervous, right? We all know that. Uh, we start believing things uh, as far as possibility is concerned when we're unsure about situations. We all know this. So take note of it this time. Start to filter through all those things, right? You're, you're, we're not here to call people out because people emotionally, sometimes they believe exactly what they're saying, right? And, but you be the sober one. You be that voice of reason in your circle. You be the calm one that will, that will hear from the Lord, right? And that can be steady in whatever you state so that you're not moved by these things, but you truly understand that the Lord has orchestrated these things. And, or, and just, just in case it pops up, no, I do not believe mankind has anything to do with this eclipse. I heard something today. Somebody said, well, I think that uh, it's, it's an illusion or something. Mankind, I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that. I, I just don't believe it. Right? I don't believe that. Th there's a reason I don't believe certain things. And it's better I show you than to tell you my reasons why I don't believe in certain things. See, seeing is believing. I'm telling you that now. Seeing is believing. If you had eyes to see all the time specific things, well, then you too would not be in such high belief of half of what's being said all over the Internet and other places. So some people have that, uh, they have that luxury to be able to see in real time. Uh, a broad spectrum of things, right? A lot of people do not, but some people do, right? And I certainly do not want people falling for tricks. That really gets to me, right? 
just not to go into another story, but I've seen too many people die in combat from other people's nervousness, from cuckoo imaginative stories that turn out to be not true, bad intelligence that only got people killed. And I was the one that had to write the letters home. So no, I, I don't like it when people are fooled. I really don't like that. And it's not good to respond emotionally. Start telling people everything because you have you speculate something may happen, right? When you have an audience and people are listening to you, your words matter. Things matter. We all have to be mindful of that, right? We're not here to call people out because they do it. Just take a mental note so that you're the sober one, so that you're the voice of reason. Dark days are coming, and I'm not talking about this eclipse, but dark days are coming. And we have a charge we we were born to be ready for this time that's coming all of us know that we were born for the belief in the end times now how did that happen and all of you bear witness to that you already knew about the end times when nobody else around you believed it you already knew you were born to be a vessel in the end times don't let anybody knock you off that path prematurely we all know what's coming we all know that people are going to be caught unawares. We all know that people are not going to be prepared. We have to make sure that we are prepared and prepared in truth, especially for those who won't prepare at all. Right? We are pillars in the faith concerning prophecy, concerning these end times. Let's go ahead and come to terms with that. All of you are familiar with prophecy. All of you knew Something was wrong with the world, and you knew that somehow during your lifetime, things would begin to fall apart, and you're witnessing that now. You know what that means? You're the ones. You're the ones who are appointed to stand firm when everybody else folds up. You're the ones that people are going to need. You're, you've been preserved this entire time. You've not been left behind. You've been preserved. A lot of people who have been in operation... They won't be operating long, right? They won't. They're, they're getting tired. They're getting burned out. And their narrative is not coming to pass. And so they're giving up and turning their back on a lot of things. You're not those people. You're not. You're meant for it. That means you're able to handle it or you would not be alive in this time. Keep that in mind. Now, as for today, just take note. Things can happen in the atmosphere because of instant cooling. I mean, sometimes it causes a banding effect in the ground. It does right before uh, totality. Right? You may look down at your sidewalk and see shimmers, bands in the sidewalk. I took a picture one time of that. They are bands that can be seen sometimes before, right before, and right after totality. You can see them on sidewalks on the side of houses, wherever shadows are. It's like wavy bands. They look very strange and odd. It's very difficult to reproduce, right, as far as uh, artwork or something like that's concerned. So it, it's one of those phenomena. And they're still unsure. Nobody knows how those bands come to be. They don't know yet. They can, even the best of scientists can only speculate. They don't know that phenomena very well, right? It's only observed for about one second. That's it, one or two seconds. So uh, you, you can't see that banding. Some people will see a bunch of moons all over the ground right a bunch of uh it looks like a crescent a bunch of crescents all over the ground some people will see that phenomenon in every single shadow they're going to see a crescent the eclipse will show through every single shadow on the ground right wherever you see sunlight when the moon starts to eclipse the sun you're going to see a, a re-representation of the eclipse on the ground by way of a shadow which is why a lot of people are taking uh, some sort of reflective material poking a hole in it. And when the eclipse happens, right, the light that comes through that hole to the ground is going to make a big image of the eclipse itself. So you don't have to look up. You just kind of look at the reproduced image on the ground. A lot of people will be doing that. With that, folks, you guys have a blessed day. Hopefully, I will see you tonight. Sometimes during an eclipse, they have problems with communications afterward. Sometimes. Sometimes they do. Uh, it's not permanent. But we know we're in 
very strange times. Keep in mind, though, you will be able to see what's behind the sun. Don't be surprised if you see a bunch of moving things either in the atmosphere. Right? Listen, truth be told, there's something in infrared. You can see the skies lit up every single day. If you have phosphate NVGs or you can see an infrared in the sky, uh, all you have to do is go outside and wait about 10 minutes. Anywhere you can look in the sky, you're going to start to see something is moving up there, zipping left and right, making sharp turns. That's just the way it is. That's becoming something normal. Right? So you can see that anytime you want to see that. Just don't dive too deeply into it. Head over heels into it until the Lord reveals to you what that actually is. I call them salt walkers. They have their place too. But they're not, uh, you know, this isn't Star Wars. This is not Star Trek. It's none of those movies. This is the real deal. Now let's go ahead and face it. There are ancient things on this earth influencing mankind. And they're attempting to spoil the family reunion that you're destined for. That's what they're trying to spoil. They're trying to turn you against your own true family. Not your earthly family. Your permanent family. That's what they're doing. That's what they're here for. So, don't let them win in your life. Don't let them turn you against your family. Don't let them do it. That's what they've been doing all this time attempting to corrupt the ways of the Lord in you because that would turn you against your real family. Don't compliment them in their activities. Recognize what they're doing and simply say no. Not here. Not now, not ever. That's what you say. Folks, I'm going to say God bless you. I'm going to see you guys this evening unless something else takes place. I'm may pop back on. If I do pop back on, it'll be on channel zero, more than likely. Keep those things in mind so you're not alarmed, or, you know, some people will speculate and get nervous. The winds may stop as soon as the shadow is right over your area. That happens a lot, and, you know, people can turn that into all sorts of things, scaring people. Please don't be one of those people who operate in life fear-based, full of anxieties. Please don't be those people. What the Holy Spirit communicates is always perfect, never in error. Right? So let's be careful. To, we're destined to operate by that power of the Holy Spirit anyway. Right? Not, not the spirit of man, not the spirit of error, none of those things. We're destined for much higher things. God bless each of you. You guys be safe. Listen, if you don't know about a solar eclipse, uh, if you don't know about... When you can see this, look at the sun or not, just don't look at all. Don't look at all. Okay? Don't look at all. And for those of you who observe this phenomenon, study it. It is the one time you'll be able to see what's behind the sun. So if you get snapshots of anything, right, be sure to share it. Do that. Because whatever's behind the sun will not be hidden for that short degree of time. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. Which will, hopefully it'll be tonight um, at 7 p.m. without interruption or delay. God bless you. Good evening, everybody out there. How are you guys this evening? Hey, everybody made it. We're still here. Nothing happened. Except for the crazed activity. People are truly, honestly, they, they had their experience. Today, they were really touched by this uh, event. Can you imagine that? They were really touched. And it is so odd. Well, you guys know I can't be quiet about it, right? I do observe. I do. Not the eclipse, but people. Based on... They, you, you, here's, there's a wonderful aspect to this that since it's, you know, over with, I will speak about since the end did not come. I will speak about it. But people, people were genuinely taken by this. 
They really were. They knew it was coming. They knew what to expect. They knew uh, the exact moment it would happen. Right? So they had all the technical details about it. And they went absolutely bonkers. People were crying. Crying. People were shedding tears. Right? And the, the response was, when the darkness came, they were crying over the darkness. It's like they were so happy for the darkness. And it was, I believe, personally, there is a disconnect. They're disassociated with the Creator. They're doing exactly what the Word of God says they would do. That they would worship the creation more than the Creator. And they're, they're back to doing that again. And in fact, worship of the creation is in their hearts. And they were really touched by this uh, celestial phenomena. And they missed the whole point of it. At not one point, at not one point did some of these the major people, right? At no point did they ever acknowledge the creator. I heard the emotional responses of some, right? And they likened it. They said they got emotional because it reminded them that everybody is all one. That's what they said. Folks, it, but they did not mention the creator. They didn't do it. No mention of the creator. And in the word of God, it says, it says that they would worship the creation more than the creator. And they would return to that. They're back to that again. Now, one of the amazing parts is, that happened a long time ago. When people worshipped the creation more than the creator. It was foretold that it would happen again. The days that we live in now, right? That was foretold. It's happening again all over the earth, right? People do worship the creation, not the one who created uh, the moon. Nobody got emotional out there who was who was displaying their you know celebration of this event. They didn't speak openly about he who created the moon. Even Christians, right? Even the Christians, certain Christians, gave no acknowledgement of God the Father that the moon, the earth, and this event is by his hand. They didn't. So it's almost like uh, a lot of folks, a lot of folks are, they're back to doing exactly what the Word of God said they would do. Now, this brings up something very interesting. Something I can bring up now that the eclipse is over. I was not impressed by, like other people are. The event was significant. And it is significant. But not in the ways patterned after the world or after common thinking of most. No. No, this event was different. Very different I'm going to explain to you guys why it was so different so that you can see with a brand new set of eyes something that, uh, well, I tend to look at all the time. Once you see it with different eyes, guaranteed to change your perspective just a bit, right? Just a bit. Also, when it got up to Maine, right? Uh, some things began to slip on, on you know, with, with uh, some of the broadcasters. Some of you guys were watching out for some of the broadcasters. And, well, some things started to slip. Of course, when they, at, at uh, totality on national television, they started to see things. One of the guys, after pointing something out, only went back to another subject quickly because he was asking his producer. He was asking the people. He said, what is that? This is what he said. This is on national TV. So it's, it's right there for anybody to go back and to record. Uh, so that was, that was something. And then when he got back to this uh, gentleman, 
He said, wait a minute. I see more. And somebody in the back said, they gave the color of them. He said, yes, they're that color. He said, what is that? That's what he kept saying, right? Um, also, when it was in, uh, when it was near Ohio, same thing happened again, right? Uh, so, yeah. It was a very interesting day, but I'm going to give you guys a perspective when I come back. I want you to see something for the first time and get yourselves prepared. The storms are coming. So are the bugs. Water's coming. Folks, I'll be back in just a few minutes right here at COT. I'm going to get everything else set up. I'm going to come back. We're going to discuss another viewpoint of God's creation. Hmm? I'll be right back in just a few minutes right here at COT. I want you guys to get alarmed, okay? But uh, I'm old, right? Older. And that means I can get tired. And today is one of those days. All right, just so you know that, don't get alarmed. If crickets, you know, start making that noise, or, uh, you know, something like that happens. Anyway, for a conversation, a few things we're going to cover. Guys, I want to thank you for being here tonight. All right? I know tonight's uh, conversation could be a bit different. Uh, just give me some latitude, if you would, please. That'd be okay. Okay. Everybody. The first thing we're going to address, right? As part, as being a believer, right? There are lots of believers out there. Lots of believers. Right? I love the believers in Christ. I do. So we have to address something. Because I know that some of you are probably not happy. I know you're not happy because you heard or listened to some people make some declarations. Right? And it didn't exactly come to pass. Okay, so we have to address something called a false prophet. Can we do that? Can we do that? Okay. Without, without, don't, don't, don't dredge up memories or any of those things. Right? So let me explain something to you guys. What do you guys think prophecy is in the first place? What do you think that is? Prophecy. And why in the Bible does it say that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy? Why? Let me make it short for you. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh, right? Which means prophecy is what thus saith the Lord, okay? That's what prophecy is. Prophecy is what God is telling us. It's what God says he's going to do. That's what prophecy is, okay? So we have to make this distinction. Prophecy is not what I think. Prophecy is what the Lord says he's going to do. That's a big difference. So, for example, during this eclipse, I know that you guys heard. Now, I'm not sanctioning any of it either. I'm just telling you something here. If, let me give you this example first, real quick. I like snow, right? I do. I like snow. So, in the winter time, when they say it's going to snow, you know, 10 inches, right? I say, oh boy, I get happy because I like snow. I want it to snow 10 inches. So if somebody ever comes to me and they say, well, what's the weather going to do? Well, hopefully it snows 10 inches. I hope we get 20 inches, right? Why am I saying that like that? Because of my feelings, right? Because I'm partial to snow. And so when somebody asks me something, I'm going to be excited about the snow, okay? I'm going to speak in accordance with that excitement. A lot of people do that. They think certain things, right? They have emotional answers. That's a person's viewpoint. Anybody can give their viewpoint, right? Anybody can. Anybody can. Okay? So take note of that, right? Anybody can. Um, but when a person says, well, God is going to do so-and-so, right? That's totally different. People ought to be preserved in that. 
right? That's prophecy. And it is a false prophecy when somebody says God is going to do something or God has declared something and he has not. Right? So make that distinction between the two because you're going to you're going to hear it. You're going to hear the excitement of Christians who who feel so a lot of you guys, right? A lot of you guys, you want the Lord to come back and rapture everybody right now. You do. And so, guess what? You're going to be partial to anything dealing with the rapture. You're going to be prone. You're going to be biased towards that. Right, that's fine. That's fine. The line that you draw between yourself and declarations of what God said, right, is just that. Don't declare anything out there. God did not expressly give you. Don't declare it. Because that is false prophecy. When you say God said something, okay, now you're speaking for the throne of God. Okay? So that's a problem. This eclipse, lots of people had many ideas. They had, they had uh, you know, they thought things would happen. You know, some people, they went a bit too far. But as far as a Christian community, a lot of people get excited. And they, they really do believe that moments like this could mark uh, some pretty big happenings. It's not that they said God was going to do it. They said something like that could happen. Right? So you got to make that distinction. Never give the adversary ammunition to have you start to hate your fellow man. Because something did not happen that you desire to happen, and they spoke it. Don't do that. Make a distinction. Have an understanding that what prophecy is, is what God says he's going to do. And if somebody speaks that way, right, well, then that deserves a bit of intervention. But when somebody is expressing their ideas, when they think something could take place, or they're, they're given a statement, an emotional statement of what they they suspect will happen at some point. Make that distinction. Don't don't be so equipped and ready to point at somebody and say you're guilty because you said you thought this would happen and it didn't take place. You're a false prophet. No, a false prophet is somebody who declares, who speaks something, and they say God said it. Always take note of those things. See, because you can you can really help people out. You really can. When somebody does that, obviously they're excited. How many of you were ever excited? You got ahead of yourself and you thought that the Lord would do something. You were totally convinced and you actually believed it, but it never took place. That happens, right? That really does happen. That's not you being a false prophet. That's you being hopeful in something you may not have a full understanding of. So make that distinction between the two so that you're not walking around becoming those who tear down other Christians, okay? Make that distinction. Always take a mental note. Take a mental note of things, but make please make that distinction. All right? Now, if, if I were to say something, if I were to say, well, God said he's going to do so and so on this date, and that thing doesn't happen, every single last one of you better write me and, and say, Mike, you've lost it. You gotta come back and you gotta, you gotta talk about that when you totally mess that one up. Give me a strong rebuke and everything else. But when a person has an idea, they have an idea. You don't accept that as authoritative. Don't do that. Never do that. It's not authoritative. If somebody has an idea and they think something is gonna happen, well that's what they think. You gotta be careful not to get caught up in what people think. Make that distinction between the two. You know, I looked at the world today. And these guys were, were just crying at the moon. And the sun, are you kidding? It was a shadow. And they were crying. They were emotional. And they gave no honor to the Most High. Now, we don't know what they were feeling inside. But people were highly emotional over something so silly. To a Christian, it marks... Right? It is significant because it's significant to me for different reasons than for most. This solar eclipse, I'm going to tell you why it was significant to me. Because I already shared with you guys 
people were asking me, well, do you think anything is going to happen? I said, no, I, the Lord gave me nothing about this eclipse. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right? He gave me nothing. And I trust what the Lord gives me. He gave me nothing. Some, some people got angry at me because I said the Lord gave me nothing, but he didn't. He didn't give me anything. Right? Some people are trying to put a safety cushion around themselves, saying that, well, it's, you know, it's not the eclipse. It's what's going to happen after. Because, listen, people, let's go ahead and face it, people in this day and age, because of YouTube and social media, they're trying to be relevant at all costs. Relevancy is their income. All right? That's what relevancy is for them. And it's very competitive. Thank you, Lord. I'm not in that game. But that's how they make their living. Right? That's just how that is. They have to remain relevant. All right? So anyway, anyway, anyway. Make those distinctions. But let me tell you why it was so significant to me, but not like it was to everybody else. A long time ago, God created everything. God created the sun and the moon and stars and everything, right? He already did that. He already did that. And over time, kingdoms rose and fell. They did. They rose and fell. And then, of course, we get to the time when the USA is being established. Something moved people to build these cities in certain places. Something moved them to name these cities what they named them. Something moved them to do that. Right? We know what that something is, but it moved them to do that. Then all of a sudden in 2024, the shadow of the moon crosses these places people were moved to build. Now, see, I find that utterly astounding. I do. I find that astounding. Not because, listen, not because of, of, of the names of the, the, the coincidences that people think are coincidences, right? Not because of that. Because sometimes people act like God just now made the moon, right? And had the moon uh, cast a shadow over these specific cities. That's not what he did. He had men build cities where the moon was going to cross from the beginning. That's astounding. See, that's astounding. What always gets me about prophecy is not the actual event. I never get excited about the event. I never get excited about the event. Call me a killjoy in that area, but I never get excited about the event. Right? Never. Just like Jesus on the water. I noticed that when I was younger. But one time I heard a person, they were giving that sermon about Jesus walking on the water. And everybody was excited, right? I never got excited about that. I got excited that the storm happened at the same time that the boat was on the water. And Jesus was on the water with the storm. I didn't even pay attention to him walking on the water because that was somewhat normal. I expected Christ to do above and beyond what mankind likes to place his limitations on. But it was the, the growth of those young disciples to put them in a mental position of vulnerability during a storm that they would actually start to pay attention to any help or to anything they would see. I found the timing of how God raises people. I always find that astounding. You see, in prophecy, men and women end up being exactly how God describes them. Do you know what has to happen to get a person to be in a mental position over the course of time like that? Do, do, do you understand that in order for the Bible to continue to be correct, like when it says men worship the creation more than the creator, do you understand what has to happen to the people at the very beginning when they live on the earth? God is working with them, being mindful of you. 
What about the cities being built in the path of this eclipse? What about the one city in the crosshairs of the eclipse? And I'm telling you, it's not good. What's in the crosshairs of the eclipse? Now, you guys live your own life. But I'm going to tell you something. If the Lord ever put an X, X marks a spot, two of them, 2017 and 2023 and 2024, we have an eclipse, and it marked two specific places. Of significance, of all the places, it marked two specific places. Do you really think that I would have knowledge of that and, and uh, operate with impunity in those places? No. You better watch out. I'm just telling you now. There's no games being played here, right? None. But people always end up being as God said they would be when his prophecies are being fulfilled. That means from day one, God has been involved in everybody's life. And you understand that he touched everyone's life so that the people that would be in the time of the occupation of that prophecy, so they would be exactly as God said they would be. That is, is utterly astounding. Look at the days we live in now. We know the prophecy surrounding these days. We live in the times when men would no longer endure sound doctrine. Do you understand what it would take to pinpoint people at a specific time in history? You'd have to work with those people from the beginning, which means that God has been intimate with everybody's life to this very day. Intimate. That is astounding. He's been working with everybody. We just can't comprehend that. Some are given over. He's given them an opportunity. He's a loving God. He does not discount a person at birth. He didn't. He worked with him. But things are turning out exactly as the word said they would. That is amazing. That's amazing. That is amazing. Anyway, that's what astounds me. So when it comes to these eclipses, it is not the eclipse itself that was always coming. Right? It is that mankind was influenced to build things in the path of this eclipse. It is the place that's being occupied at the time of that celestial phenomena. The eclipse was always coming. The shadow was always going to come over this part of the earth. God set that in motion from the beginning. But he was so intimate in people's lives. And America was built in a specific position. That in 2024, right, that it will go over 13 states. The same number dealing with the inception of the entire country. That's not coincidence. That means God was intimate, very intimate, very involved in the activities of mankind to this very day. That, that is amazing. And not only for the USA, but for every single landmass on this earth. There's not a place you can go to where you will eventually discover that God has been intimately involved in everybody's life from the beginning up until this very time. Hmm? There's not one place you can go to where you will not find that. You will find the Lord's fingerprints and signature everywhere. That is amazing. That's amazing. So, I never get into the mood where I'm looking at the moon and I just, you know, look with awe and wonder. I don't do that. God created that. That's part of creation. The moon is no different than a squirrel. It's no different than a squirrel. What is amazing is the framework the Lord set up. His intimate involvement in humanity. 
Creation is on what autopilot. It's going to be obedient. We're the only species that can freely be disobedient, right? But we know that God was intimately involved every step of the way. You know, it really affirms that you're in a managed process. Think about this real quick. In this life, one day, if we make it all the way to the end, if we don't faint, like the Bible says, right? If we endure until the end, the same shall be saved, right? So if we, if we don't give up, one day we're going to be part of an eternal family. Permanently, right? So that means God is raising an eternal family of whom he has given free will. So he never forces anybody to be family. He made angels that way, and some of the angels fell away. He gave them free will. They fell away. They did. Do you think the Lord will suffer what he loves the most to fall away again? No. He's going to pre-qualify his children, right? Satan fell, and then humans came. Satan fell long before humans came. So us humans, we go through this process, right? We're being exposed to good and evil every day of our lives, right? What's happening, though, when we're exposed to good and evil? At first, we don't know about the evil. We think some of the evil is good, and we get exposed to it. And then once we learn what evil is, we say, I don't want that. I do not want that. I don't associate with that. Give me away from that. I'm with the good. And then we walk away from that, and nothing is able to make us go back to that again. We're learning about darkness and light, and we're learning how to choose light. By knowing the truth about both. See, it's naturally in you not to want to do evil things. That's what you probably have not gotten yet. It is not within you to naturally want to do something evil. You find yourself in the middle of evil things because often they are convenient and they lead to an evil outcome. But when you find out what it is, what do you end up doing? You say, nope, I don't want that. That's exactly what you say. Think of it this way. Do you think God wants angels that will not execute his word? Do you think God wants angels that will rebel against him again? No. Nope. But he's not forcing the angels to listen to him. The angels are choosing to listen to him. They're choosing it. And guess what? So are you. And at the end of it, you will have learned how to overcome evil. What if an angel knew nothing about darkness? Then an angel could be fooled. And every time God sent them on a mission, that mission could be abruptly halted, redirected. Right? That angel could end up doing something against the Most High, not even knowing it. Why? They could be tricked. God's angels cannot be tricked. And guess what? At the end of this process, you won't be able to be tricked either. That's what your life is. That's why Christ was agreed to be sent from the beginning for you. Because the Lord knew about all of what you would get yourselves into. But he knows this above all things. When you find out what darkness is, you keep saying the same thing. I want nothing to do with that. And you start working to overcome it. He's, he's, he's teaching you, helping you. How to overcome all darkness, not some of it, all darkness. That when you're finished with this process, right? When you actually enter into life itself, you'll be a permanent member of the family of the living God. And you will not repeat what Satan did, what the fallen angels did. You won't do that. Isn't that something? So in truth, what people have made a mistake, people have made a mistake when you push the word of God out of your life. Like these people who were crying about the moon today, they're not very sensitive to the word of God. And because they pushed it out of their lives, they have misdefined what life is. When you don't know what life is supposed to be, life becomes depressing. Think about that. 
can you imagine a kid that does not understand what school is? They don't understand what a test is. School would be an absolute nightmare for a child. And indeed, isn't that the way it is? Until they learn what school is. If a person does not know what this life is, they'll try to make it a paradise. They're trying to turn it into something that they can live out the rest of their lives on. They don't understand this is nothing more than a set of tests. And everything, everything is on purpose. Everything that happens is on purpose. Everything is working something in your life. To raise you up to overcome all darkness. Everything. See, when you know what this life is for, you cannot be upset. Because you understand the purpose of all things that happen. When you find yourself in a situation, see, the reason why people get this bad taste in their mouth and they get upset is because they truly believe they shouldn't be in that situation. Because they don't know what life is for. They have forgotten that knowledge about what life is for. And when you forget that knowledge, you start redefining what life is. That's when you get upset and depressed. So if people push away the word, they have no, they have no guidance in what life is for. I'll put you here temporarily. This is not some permanent place. And that's the error most people run around with. That's why they want to live forever. And they don't even know what life is yet. This is not life life. No. This is the test. This is when you're raised. This is when you overcome all works of darkness. At first you're prone to it. Then you learn to see it. Then you see it face to face and you know what it is. And when you know what it is, you start to learn to overcome it. Once you overcome it, nobody can make you fall prey to it again. Do you think God wants you in the kingdom, but you would fall for every dark trick out there? No. Everybody who's in the kingdom of God eventually is going to be an overcomer of all darkness, of all darkness. That means in order for you to be an overcomer of all darkness, you've got to be exposed to it. You've got to see it in truth. You've got to handle it. You've got to deal with it. You've got to be thrown headfirst into it. It's a carefully managed situation. Nothing is out of control. Our thinking is out of control because sometimes we continue to push away the word of God. The Word of God defines what your life actually is. And it's becoming lost knowledge because people don't know what life is for. They try to make it be about something. Then they get upset because they don't know what life is for. Right? They're trying to make it a paradise. It's not some paradise. It's not some paradise. And everything in your life is carefully managed. Nothing. Is by coincidence or happenstance in your life? Everything is used that you may overcome darkness. God does all things in truth. So if you overcome darkness in truth, guess what? God's going to expose you to it. All of you have been exposed to darkness. All of you have. All of you have been exposed to darkness. All of you have been exposed to tricks. All of you have been exposed to confusion. All of you have been exposed to every element of creation. All of you have. And God is teaching you how to overcome all of it. Because he is natural within you. Listen, I'll say it again. No matter who you think you are, no matter how bad you think you are, here's the truth. Every time you fully understand what darkness is, you say the same thing. You know what you say? I want nothing to do with that. And that's when you begin to overcome it. You don't hide from it. You don't run away from it. You overcome it. You cause it to be of no effect. Christ signifies the fact that God knew you were going to be in trouble with sin. So he sent his son to cover those areas of your life that you had to be exposed to for a season. So 
so that you can identify my way of truth, darkness. Because you keep making the same decision. You keep saying, nope, when you really understand what darkness is, you say, nope, I want no part of that. That's not me. That's not me. And you go right to the light. That's why I never prematurely judge. That's why. Because people will always change. God didn't make a mistake sending you here. He knows exactly what he's doing. We are the Einsteins that often do not know what he's doing. Knowledge is lost like that. Like the reason people are here on this earth. Again, they begin to define why they're here. They live these horrific lives. They don't understand the components in their life. They're in constant rejection of what's happening because they never knew it was supposed to happen. See, when you know something is supposed to happen, it changes everything. When you know you're supposed to have problems, when you know you're supposed to be exposed to these bad and awful times, when you know the reason, oh, see, everything changes. Right? When you don't expect trouble, that's when trouble becomes real trouble. When you expect the trouble, it's expected. You'll say, oh, there it is. So let me, let me act accordingly. Right? Lord, let me apply what you taught me to get over this to see if it works, to see how well I'm going to do with this. You do your thing. You say, look, well, Lord, I fell prey to it. I fell for it. I knew it was trouble and fell for it anyway. Christ is right there. Because you honestly say, forgive me. I messed that all up, Lord. I messed it up. I became part of it. You were showing me how to get over it, and I became part of it. Forgive me. And he does. And when you find out what that thing actually is, you start saying, oh, that's destructive. It'll come right to your face, and it won't even bother you. You'll say, shoe fly, you're destructive, and you'll keep walking. That's when you've overcome that dark area. You're no longer prone to it. When you overcome it, it can come to your face a thousand times a day, and a thousand times a day, you're going to pluck it to the side. It is of no effect. That's what the Lord's been doing. Look in your life and see if the Lord has not been doing that very thing. You're being made immune to the lure of darkness itself. It can't get to you like it used to. Remember how it pulled you in? Remember how people would say things to make you sad, to make you think, to maneuver where you would go? And the same thing can be said right now, and you'll just pluck it to the side. You'll say, oh, I heard that before. I know what that's all about. I even know why the person said it. But I'm not dealing with that right now. Right now, I'm doing something else. I have no time for that. That's when you're walking around with wisdom. Because the Lord is having you overcome all things. And guess what? He's doing it. We don't know how to do it naturally. See, naturally... We want to be a part of heaven, something heavenly, naturally. Naturally, none of us wants anything to do with anything of darkness, naturally. And the Lord is teaching us. Do you guys see what's happening? It's part of the process here, right? Do you know that's forgotten knowledge? It's forgotten knowledge as to why we're here. And if you were one of those who forgot just by hearing this, it'll lift your spirit that much more. Just by hearing this will lift your spirit and start putting things in perspective. They're not my words, by the way. This is what our Father gives us. What we operate by. Right? The ones who don't know about this are the ones who are scared to death of death itself. Because the ones who know about this, death is nothing but a, one of the steps in the process. Huh? How many people spend all their life trying to live forever? How foolish. How foolish is that? Then they get totally misdirected like today. They see an eclipse and they get so emotional because at that moment they realize there's something out there bigger than they are. And they start crying. Oh, we just got put into darkness. And we're all here stuck in the darkness together. And then the light is shown. They cannot interpret what they just saw. So to them is some big emotional event that took place. When in truth, it's a simple reminder that God put things in motion. This is God's process for our lives. They don't know that. They have no context for it. 
They know it's a big deal. They don't know how it's a big deal. And not once did any of them mention the Creator. Not once did any of them mention the Lord. And the Lord said everything in the... Think about this. He made two great lights in the skies. One to rule the day and one to rule the night. Boy, that sounds familiar. The lesser light rules the night. Well, in the New Testament, you read something, and it says this. You're not children of the night. You don't sleep in the night, right, as sinners do. You're children of the day. That means you're not children of that lesser light that rules the night. You're children of the day. You know who that lesser light is? You know who it is. Man does not know. They get creative in movies and things, but they have no idea what they're talking about. But they're telling the story with everything they do. They're telling the true story of that lesser light and what it signifies. Isn't that funny? Even their activities that are done at night. In the Bible it says, those, right, those who were creatures of the night or children of the night, they're sinners in the world. And sure enough, all the evil, or let's just say some of the less tasteful ways that people choose to live, they live that way at nighttime. And during the day, they hide themselves. But you know what's about to happen? Huh? You've been in the night for a long time. That lesser light has been ruling this short night that's been on the earth. Guess what's happening? The sun is coming. Oh, my goodness. Your children of the day, the sun is coming. When the sun comes, all the day creatures come out. You're not children of the night. That's not what you are. You're children of the day. So when the sun rises, so do you. When the sun shows up, so do you. And in the Bible, what does it say? What does it say? You will be revealed when Christ Jesus is revealed. See, the heavens are telling you something every day of your life. But listen, if you're disconnected, if you're disconnected, from what creation is, you're not, you'll be emotional about something you couldn't possibly understand. That's what's happening in our world today. The same people who cried because of the phenomena of the eclipse and the feeling they got, these are the same ones that are trying their best to preserve everything in nature. All of a sudden, they see nature as being important. And they're trying to save it. They don't know why they're doing that. Those who understand what this process is, they do understand why people feel that way. But they don't have a context to what's driving them. So it is often perverted. Right? They go too far in certain areas. Everything you see in this creation is constantly ministering. The same word you read in the Bible. Now, you know, somebody just didn't think that one up. Mm. Do you know how smart of a person you would have to be to perfectly join creation with a book and have that book withstand the test of time and the mindset of all men, whether they receive it or not to live by those conditions, to have the outcome consistent and true every single time? My goodness. The treasure we have to have such insights. And what a greater gift it is for the Lord to put confirmation within your soul, a place no other person can touch, to put that confirmation in your soul. That you would be able to recognize heavenly truth when you see it. So the issue is here, folks, many have forgotten why. They have forgotten why. We're here. They have forgotten that they have been sent here. 
They've been listening to the wrong narrators. You wouldn't be upset when you know the truth. See, that's what Jesus was saying. When the truth will make you free. Because when you know the truth, you're not in bondage anymore because you have understanding. That's what the Lord was saying. Let me not get excited, start drooling, yelling, and all that stuff. Can you see it? That's what the Lord was saying. If you continue in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will... He said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So what happens when you don't know why you're here? You're in misery. And how many of you tonight... In all honesty, your life is somewhat miserable, or it was miserable. It's okay to tell the truth here. There's not one soul in here that can judge your life. No one in this house can judge your life. No one. You know what the truth be told? Many people are not pleased with their lives. And you know what the truth is? We get, to, we forgot there's lost knowledge about why we're here. If we get that back, huh? you think it'll make a difference? Is this conversation making a difference to some of you right now? You don't have to lie and say, yeah. If it's not, then it's not. But if it is, it is. Is it making a difference? Because if it's making a difference, the only thing that's happening here as things are being put in perspective according to the word of God, not according to me. It truly means that when we forget God's processes, what they're for, and we start reassigning what life is for, we start living in depression because we're constantly looking for an outcome. God never, he never told us that that was coming. Some of you say, well, I can never get so-and-so because God never told you. You're going to obtain a certain outcome the way you are. No, no, this is for real. This process means everything. This life that you're living here, right? Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. What was he talking about? A lot of people equate that to here on this earth. Well, God wants you to have everything in the world and everything is yours. And no, no, no. The Bible, while well, you're living on this earth, right? What are you? When you're in the flesh, what are you? Can you be alive fully? The word says, no, you cannot. You're liberated from this flesh. Then you enter into the realm of what? Life. Life. Abundant life. So I'll say it again. This is not your paradise. This is a giant classroom. Creation is teaching you. Just like you go in a classroom and they have learning aids on the walls. Look up into the heavens. And you tell me that the heavens are not telling you the word of God every single day. Look at the animals. Look at everything in creation. And tell me it does not echo the principles of the Most High every single day. Celestials. Those are learning aids. Reinforcements to the word of God. Day and night the same thing. Everything we endure, even a storm, is the same thing. It's a learning aid. When you know about those learning aids, when you know about the classroom, it's when you start looking at storms differently. That's when you look at all these events in the earth expectantly. That's when you're not lost in the sauce and lose your footing and get depressed and turn into Charlie Brown. You don't do that. And it's important that all of us remember what this process is for. Those people I saw today are truly lost. They have no idea 
was coming for them. I can I almost see in my mind's eye people in the darkness not knowing what it represents. And they think they're having a good time in the darkness. They have no idea what's coming. They were talking about the temperature drops when they were in totality. How they couldn't see anything. The cameras glitched out from an abrupt blockage of radiation streams. That's going to happen one day. And it's not going to be over in two and a half to four minutes. It's going to start one day and it's going to remain that way for the entirety of the earth. For some time. I can assure you no one's going to celebrate then. When temperatures drop 100 degrees. All right. I've rambled enough. You guys have that part. Listen, i got to tell you something. Something has been happening to the animals. I didn't want to say anything prior to this eclipse because of all the stuff that's behind it. When I come back from this break, I'm going to tell you guys about it because I want you to be mindful of it. I want you to look out for it. Because some of you are going to have to call law enforcement because of it. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at the Council of Time. All right, nobody laugh at me during this segment. This is going to sound, some of this is going to sound funny. But it's not funny, right? It will sound kind of funny. Some of it will sound funny. But keep in mind, we are looking into the book of Revelation. We are starting summaries in the book of Revelation before we move on to other books. And all of it is relevant to the book of Revelation. It is very relevant to the changes in creation that have already been foretold to come. It is quite serious. But yes, some of it sounds funny. First of all, I want to tell you guys something. When you have cases in law enforcement, and those cases are being investigated due to their high strangeness, they're not disclosable to the public. Right? Some of those investigations are, records are sealed. And uh, most often, records are somewhat tied up so that they cannot be published. Right? That goes with some of you guys who are in the old CID units. Who, uh, but for about the last, what, say a couple months, there's been an activity in creation. It's been very, uh, at first, at first, it, it seemed to be a joke. Right? Some misrep representation of what people saw, what they endured, you know. So the reports were taken, yet little was being done about it until the numbers grew. Today, the numbers of these happenings are climbing. Some of it's going to sound funny. It will. But, uh, quite serious. I'm going to start with the birds. February. Some of you may have noticed also the boldness of birds. Birds flying in the middle of streets and not moving. Right? Seems normal. Until more birds start joining in with the one bird. Now, that seems normal until they make traffic start swerving, right? Traffic on highway starts swerving. A couple of accidents, 
a couple of weird chuckles, you know, taking the reports, dodging a bird. Until this one case that seemed to multiply. The birds were doing this in small numbers. It's seemingly forcing cars to swerve until a bird got ran over. All those birds attacked that car. Left every other car alone, attacked the one car, that ran over the bird. They were trying to get at the people inside the car. One person was hurt by the birds. But it happened again. But it happened again. At first they thought it was, you know, something in the area. Maybe the birds were exposed to something. Maybe they got a hold of some worms in the ground that were, ground was full of mold or some sort of exotic type of mushroom or something like that. And, you know, something happened to the birds. But it was happening in different states. And that was with the birds. That continues. So it seems like the birds have, are doing intentional things. And have lost their fear of mankind. That's not good. Right? Let's move to the raccoons. Raccoons. All of us know about raccoons and their weird nature. The weird creatures. Quite amazing, actually. They began to exude strange behavior in the month of March. First reports. Doing weird things, right? Like walking in groups, like they're a little gang or something. Laying out in the roads, right? Going on people's front porches and laying out in the sun. And when the owners come out, they refuse to let the owners outside of the house. The owners go to the back door of the house. The raccoons go running around the back door, refusing to let the owners outside of the house. A couple of those reports sounds real odd. Intermingled with raccoons in the wild that are walking around in circles, getting in people's way, boldly approaching people, approaching people, right? Until it continued, until the numbers grew, until it hit a point where law enforcement had to start dispatching the animals. They didn't know what it was. CDC gets a hold of the bodies. Nothing is found in the raccoons. That's abnormal. No rabies. Because that would seem like they had rabies. No rabies. None. None. They, too, seem to express their loss of fear of humanity and a type of vengeful attitude against humanity for some reason. That still continues to this day. And it's getting worse. Let's go with the bears. We all know that uh, Kodiak bears, brown bears, grizzlies, they are dangerous. But what happens when they become somewhat passive? That's twice as spooky, right? For example, a bear is laid out beside your garbage can just sitting there. He's so quiet, you don't see him. You get in your car and drive away. You come back from work, he's still sitting right there at the garbage can, just checking everybody out. Makes no move to do anything. Doesn't flinch. Not frightened of you or anybody else. Then that same behavior is seen again, but this time, they find a moose laying in the grass with a bear up against the moose. Okay, that's, what is that? Right? What, what's going on here? Something is not right with that. A brown bear, grizzly, Kodiak with a moose, that's uh, their sworn enemies, my thought. Apparently not, not all. And both the moose and the bears, having no fear of humans, not necessarily attacking them. That's normal for a moose. Right, because people get hurt by moose every single year. So at what point did the moose change their mind and just begin to intimidate by, by, by reason of their proximity, human beings? And when did bears and moose team up? 
strange happenings, right? Let's move on to the squirrels. Squirrels have also been teaming up, it seems. But to my understanding, there's actual civilian video of the squirrels walking down the street in neighborhoods like the little gangsters. Okay, when did that start happening? You know, have you guys ever heard the bark of a squirrel? You guys ever hear that bark? So they bark when they're threatened and they run up a tree. They warn everybody. Squirrels do. They warn everybody. But what if those same squirrels were in a group coming down your neighborhood street and all of them were barking? That's odd behavior. It's very odd. And then you try to shoo them off. And they do not respond to you. They walk right over you. Daring you to get in their way. Something is happening. All across the animal kingdom. Something is happening. Now need I remind you, animals are part of God's creation. They are intimate to creation itself, to the trees, the grass, to all the processes of the earth that sustain life here. They are very important. And it seems they're losing their fear of humanity and coordinating on a level that is just of high strangeness. No rabies involved, no toxins involved. Toxicology, all these different tests, they come back, they show nothing. No changes in the environment, nothing. And that type of behavior, right, they suspect it will turn violent at times. With the raccoons, it did. With the birds, it did. With the squirrels, it no doubt will. With the brown bears, it will. And how did bears begin to understand the language of humans? Yes, I said it. How did they come to the point where they understand the language of humans, the intent of humans? Something is happening. Creation itself is changing. And that's not necessarily for mankind. That is Actually, that's horrifying. And the only way a lot of, uh, you know, park rangers and law enforcement and any other, the only way they know how to deal with them is not to capture them, but to destroy them. But it seems like the animals already know this. So, although it sounds funny, here's what I believe. I believe that animals have far better comprehension than we ever perceived before. I believe that us being a young species and very pious in a lot of ways, we see ourselves as being the dominant species on the earth. We communicate a specific way. We do things in a specific way. Right? And we don't really expect animals to be on our level because they don't have language like ours. So we thought. So scientists thought. They're finding out something very different now. With birds, all those chirps and movements, they're communicating. They're also teaching their young. Birds, it's a known fact that birds can teach the young things verbally. And through motions of the body. And the young can interpret those things, just like a bee. A bee who goes out and scouts for flowers and things like that, they'll come back. When that bee comes back, they do a little dance. And they, you know, hum in a certain way. But what they're doing is, is they're mapping out the path they took to go get the flowers. And all the rest of the bees understand what one bee is doing. And they make a mental note of that map so they can fly to this same location. Now that scout bee has gone all over the place, covered a lot of territory until he found something. Then he comes back and communicates the location of what he found to the beehive through that little dance. That's why you see a bee come back to the hive often, and it will start just walking in circles and all over the place while what it's doing is communicating how to get 
to the feeding grounds. Do you guys know that? That's a bee. That's just a bee. So they do communicate. Dogs, they found, have a very complex set of thoughts, communications, interpretations, and a keen awareness we were not aware of. Right? So they're made differently than us. Dogs, for example, when we hurt ourselves, it hurts. Do you not know that animals don't stress out the same way about pain? They don't. That's why you can see a dog hop around with a broken leg. It'll be broken the rest of his life, and the dog does not care. Deer, you can see big chunks taken out of a deer. And that deer still feeds and wags its tail like nothing has happened. Because they're wired differently. Only human beings perceive pain the way we do. Animals do not perceive pain like us. They don't. Just as certain animals do not perceive hot and cold like we do. Right? That's why you're able to cook frogs and crabs. The only time they become aware that they're being boiled is when something goes wrong. They can't move a claw or leg or something. Right? Then they, they know something has gone wrong. Other than that... They do not interpret pain the way we do. Pain to them is more of a stimuli that says you have a limitation. Something is happening to the animals. I suspect the next step is that many animals will coordinate against humanity. They will become an enemy of humanity, those who are here. And they can discern between people. They're very good discerners. And they don't forget who is who. They don't do that. I wanted to tell you guys that because on the East Coast, raccoons are going to become a big deal, right? In the Midwest, you're going to, you know, squirrels, some of the, some of the squirrels and some of the cats are going to be a big deal. Right? Your animals at home are likely tolerant. To them, you're part of the pack, just like they are. And they'll probably look at you in confusion when you don't do the same thing they're doing. Plus, the Lord told us about animals. He did. He told us what they would begin to do with humanity. And he did. Lots of folks are acting on that. As we speak. Is that funny? Some of that stuff sounds funny, doesn't it? It does. But it is uh, absolutely true. And the phenomenon is growing. It's growing. Somebody says... Um, we are back to getting seasick feeling again. Well, I guess you would. Yes, you would. We have a change in velocity. It's going to continue to change for the next three months. It should peak in three months. Then go back down. That's all. Your body is intimately tied to the processes of those objects in the heavens like the moon. And the sun, right? Ladies, your cycle is intimate, intimately tied with the sun. And the sun is about to go through a change. You guys who know that, right? The sun is about to go through a change, so don't think it's strange when you start changing with it. Now, gentlemen, you will have a different problem. You're going to have a stimulus, stimuli problem within your bodies. You won't understand but the Lord knows what he's doing, and he knows what it takes to get you through. Well, you guys have that, hopefully. Hopefully, you can keep that in mind. 
Ladies, again, your bodies and your minds and your thoughts and everything else, you're tied to the sun, and the sun is going through a very strange period of time. And it's good that you understand that this reversal coming up on the sun is also going to affect the, the brain. It's going to affect your nervous system, period. It will affect your DNA. It is not something humanity is doing. No. Creators. Right? Those, those, the solar cycles on the sun when it flips magnetically. You just have to endure the changes that are going to take place in your biological systems. And gentlemen, you're going to really notice a decline. A decline in several areas of yourselves. Hmm? These things will have to endure. Right? We're going to have to endure. and But they are natural. They are natural. But your body is an indicator of what's actually taking place. Remember that. Remember that. Just... Just go forward. Go forward. I say it's good that we have those things, right? It is good. We can so easily become complacent, forget about the process and everything else. All of a sudden, we're back into the same rut of life we left. Please remember that. Because you're going to have a lot of people come out and attempt to Medically explain why you're turning into a creature or something. Well, there you have that, folks. There you have that. Have that. Now, anybody else have? Let me see what time is it. And somebody said, don't forget the Enoch studies. No, we have. We're not. We're going to look into Enoch uh, quite a bit. Enoch and several other books in our review of Revelation, because Revelation it seems to be unfolding now in a big way. With these, these weapons that people have. All right, let's see something here. Somebody says, I don't have enough energy to change my mind. Big shame being joyful. Zombie? No, I don't get into zombies' uh, conversations here, guys. You guys know that. And the reason why is because they're zombies. The whole zombie issue, especially dealing with the government, comes from a simulation to handle something. Well, for example, people are going to have to deal with contamination. We're done with the eclipse. And did you notice that Israel started to withdraw the troops? I was going to tell you guys last night, they came to a consensus a week ago that morale was being affected big time in Israel. And so the commanders decided uh, to concentrate forces in other areas, right, that wouldn't upset the political dynamic of the world. So I'm telling you right now that Israel made a move to satisfy the demands of the people. The people are beginning to demand of Israel to lay down their arms. You do know that, right? The people. What people, you may ask? People in Israel. People in America. People in Europe. People in France. People in other nations. All those nations that are strong enough to sustain other nations. The people of those nations are calling on a ceasefire. The people of those nations get into peace. Please take note of that. Somebody says there's something, something sprayed over the path of the eclipse. No, it is not, not to my knowledge. Nothing is being sprayed over the path of the eclipse. Not to my knowledge, and there are active vehicles that were following. They were doing atmospheric tests all day. They'll be doing them all night. They were what they were doing was measuring 
there were temperature drops up to about 30 degrees in the shadow of the sun. They were measuring cool things. Let me see, guys. Let me go back. Let me go back, guys. My scrolling is not too, not too good here. Okay, on the KD Files, guys, on the KD Files. I was in the middle of posting the other day, and I simply did not finish, right? I halted everything prior to this eclipse thing. Uh, the noise got so high that I didn't want to post anything and to, to add to the confusion that was already out there. Listen, this, this is my personal posse, uh, my, the way I operate and, and function. Normally, I wait until everybody else's declarations pass, uh, and then I'll give my little two cents, whatever that's worth, right? But I always wait until all this, all the popular things pass. I've noticed that if I say anything during one of those times where everybody is looking at everybody else's theory, then what I say will, will get highly distorted at a specific point. It get very distorted. People do the weirdest things with uh, you know, with human voices. And so what I opt to do is just stay silent and tell every, all the noise goes down, then we can discuss it. Uh, for example, now that this eclipse is over, right, now that nobody is frightened of some of the, the new Madrid going off, for example, uh, Cascadia Faults and all those things going, Yellowstone going, these are major points of interest when it comes to uh, celestial happenings and geological issues. I normally leave those areas alone after everybody has made their declarations. Uh, I leave them alone. But it's time to be straightforward in those areas. We are headed headlong into a time nobody wants. It is a test of all tests. And um, I, I just believe that the more we stay away from... Uh, fanciful ideas, the better, and the better we're going to be. It's important that we all be sober for the sake of somebody else. You guys who are in, uh, going into high school, right? you guys going into colleges, you're going to have to deal with technology that's going to really turn some things on its head. They're pulling out the stops. You're going to have to deal with things you never thought existed. That's going to cause people to be highly depressed because they were advocates against such. Other people are going to start speculating about the old ideas again, uh, thinking somehow they're going to come back. But then the real issues will come, which have nothing to do with anybody's forecasts of the end times, which, you know, personally, I really can't wait for. Truth be told, I'm going to love it. All right. Okay, folks. Let's see. Let's see where we're now. As I said before, uh, everybody, I am old. Old. That means I've gone too far for the last few days. That's what that means, right? And uh, yeah, I don't wanna go downhill too quickly in front of everybody. That would really be funny. Let all you guys have a severe laugh. Can't do that. Now, let me tell you guys, let me give you my personal caution. I want you guys to be looking for the bug releases, the flying insects. Can you do that? This is an immediate thing. Uh, migration habits, formation habits, immersion, larva locations, and behaviors, because once those flying insects are going to be forced out of the ground, right after that, the water is coming. The water is a big deal. It's coming. Flooding is going to be a big deal. It's coming. Winds will follow the rain. It's a big deal. It's going to be a big, big deal. Oh, 
Hold on, folks. The water event is coming. We're going to cover a lot more on that, though. I want you guys to ask specifics. Specifics on that water event and the bugs. Okay? Because the bugs will be a good, they'll, they'll give a good indication of some things. All right. Now, uh, listen, though, you guys who who listen to other folks, please, please, please don't discard them because their sentiment idea did not come to pass. Don't, don't discard people for that. that. You see someone who would who would say something in the name of the Lord that is absolutely wrong. If you are good friends with that person, then give that person some correction out of love. But hear me on this. Nobody has business correcting anybody unless they themselves truly love that other person. If you can't love another person, you have no business opening your mouth towards them. All you're going to do is provoke them to wrath. Oops. That's all I have for you tonight. It really is. Um, I'll be in the admin room later on tonight, but I can actually get back in there. I'm still, uh, I'm still locked down, right? So I built a brand new admin room. How about that one? I was doing that anyway. I'm going to go ahead and post it so all of you guys get in there so we can start processing everybody's uh, other requests. That means, guys, listen, uh, very soon I'm going to post your account page, your new account pages, um, so that you guys can utilize them more. All right? We're gonna, I'm going to not be slothful uh, getting your tool sets together so that you will have something to actually help your families with. We need high coordination with... Um, and tool sets available so that you guys can, with in conjunction with your family, um, start to perfect certain certain drills or contingencies uh, given given what's happening in the earth. Okay, given what's happening in the earth, and it's going to become an important thing, right? I, um, I'll also be talking about those those dreams I shared with you guys. I'm going to go into depth in the KD files about those dreams just for you guys. I do ask one thing. I do ask something to do me a favor. Uh, when you go through those KD files, right, never advocate for them, but try to extract from them what you can, please, right, and always give feedback on them. Always. Folks, God bless each of you. Don't laugh at the raccoons if you see them walking down your streets. I'm glad that everybody disagrees. Is there anything anybody wants to ask me about the eclipse that you were, that you're still bothered by? Right? And we're not here to compete with what anybody else says about the celestial phenomena. Right. And two objects. Um, just so you guys know, if you were looking at the moon, to the upper left of the moon was Jupiter. Now, I'm doing this by memory so I can be off a little bit. To the lower right was Venus. Uh, to the right of that, a little bit lower, south of that was Saturn. It was very dim. Um, uh, what's the other one? Also... When you go out from there, there were two other planets. But in the lower, listen to me, right at the lip of the sun, there were four objects picked up. Four objects that were evidently sitting or tumbling in some sort of synchronized orbit, like synchronized swimmers would, right? And these... These are arsenic. I'm going to call them arsenic bombs is what they are. They're quite large. Now, they are somehow they've been captured by our solar system. And it's only a matter of time before one of the planets will, you know, kind of 
suck them in, right? Also, we have some other objects in our orbital, orbital plane, which we will interact with, uh, I believe, in one month. One month and a, a few days, we could entertain some problems. We could. Okay? We could. Um, I'm going to keep you guys updated on that. Help me keep you guys updated by, we're going to have discussion on relevant data. Okay, relevancy of what we're doing. I don't want to do something that you guys are totally disconnected from, uh, can't be helped by it. If I make a tool in, in the new accounts room, if there's a tool that does not help you, I need to know about it. Right? We need things in there that can actually help coordinate some things and help you guys. We need some nice tools in there. Plus... Somebody said destroyer, a.k.a. Doom Constellation. I call it an evil constellation, right? An evil one, which simply means we're going to see some things that have been up there for some time, but they've been obscured. Once we finally are able to see them, then that means we're very close to, um, very close in proximity to a place in creation that will most certainly interact with us. You guys know, I believe, we are in a binary system. You know that. Uh, the binary twin has planets in orbit around it, and those planets have moons around them. What's on those things, we don't know. We don't know. But by the word of God, we can, we can almost be sure about some things. Be sure. I mean, Okay, folks, let me not ramble. Let me not ramble. Problems with what? Anyway, guys, I'm going to keep you guys updated. So do we have um, the questions on the front of the homepage? Right? Some of you guys had questions you sent them by email. I'm compiling those. They will be, the answers will be on the homepage of our site. And I'll be doing that probably every two days. After everything is set up, I'm going to be doing that every two days. I went through a lot of emails. I mean a lot of emails, right? Listen, guys, so having gone through the emails, um, there's a filter on there. If you send multiple emails at the exact same time, your whole list is going to be filtered out, right? It's going to be because some people do that to be nefarious, and some people do that because they're just unawares. Right? Try to make your emails uh, pretty concise and short, as short as possible, so we can get to everybody's. That simple courtesy towards everybody else. Right? And if it if it warrants further communication, we'll certainly have it. We'll certainly have it. But make sure you keep everybody in mind, and, and the times in mind, when it comes to. Uh, Earthquakes. Folks, God bless each of you. I'm going to see you guys next time right here at COT. And I hope you guys get some rest. I hope that uh, you guys with animals, you get them calm and secure. Right? And if you see raccoons or squirrels walking down the street and they're in a gang, right, don't laugh too hard. Don't, don't start laughing. It's going to become a serious thing. It will. All right. God bless each of you. Right. No drooling. That's right. No drooling. I am. I am so. I can't believe I'm this. Uh, this. This. This tired. I can't believe that. Can't believe I'm this tired. I really can't believe that. That. That is uh, astounding to me too. It is uh, quite astounding to me. Somebody had a question about solar players. I missed the whole thing because Mixler is not very cooperative. Uh, right now they're not I'm going to be careful of what I say uh, about these guys too because unfortunately people a lot of people hear me I don't want to throw anybody under the bus because of that I see somebody said are the solar flares that occurred during the eclipse more significant than they are at any other time well no no 
when you when we have a, a total solar eclipse, right? One of the major force drivers of this is the unknown, right? In our case, it is the public hype. That uh, that event was always going to be that event, but sometimes people they embellish things too much. And that happens. So we get beyond this. With that, though, guys, I'm going to say good night to everybody. Those of you leaving. Now, if, if, the, if the player turns on at midnight, that means um, I found a new spark and I'm coming back on. All right? If not, I'll certainly see you guys tomorrow. Okay? And we're going to have a compiled study tomorrow. Uh, there is a bullet list. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get some of that published so you guys can see that list tomorrow also. All right. God bless each of you. Yep, Flash is laughing. I'm gone. I'm gone now because, uh, guys, if you, listen, if you guys have ever been used to working a long time, you know that uh, folks like me can sleep standing up for many hours, right? And uh, so that means, you know, we're... we're we can go to sleep in any position as though we're awake one time. I'm going to tell you this, and then I'll leave. One time, this happened at the beginning of my service career. I was so tired, right? And I went and bought these glasses with eyeballs in them. And, and we were having a briefing. We just, uh, we just came to a new, new post, and we were having a, a briefing because we had one of those. We had the safety brief, and in turn, we had to give everybody else a safety brief. And it was one of the first times, you know, that I had ever given was going to give a safety brief to, uh, you know, to real troops anyway. Um, so I was sitting in the main direction, right? Everybody was sitting in the main direction. The speaker was out there. And evidently I dozed off. Now, these glasses had eyeballs behind them, right? This, or they're not like the ones, the ones today are convincing. Those back then were not convincing, but it was dark because they kept showing these, uh, they kept showing these, uh, these old movie reels. We had to watch movie reels. Anyway, all of a sudden, I kind of, you know how you peek out your eyeball, right? And you kind of suck up your drool and you're looking, it was real bright, the lights were on. I didn't move. And in, in, in my, without uttering a word, I said, oh, my Lord, I'm in trouble. You, you know, oh, boy. And then I kind of kind of looked around, right? And everybody was looking the other direction except me. Well, needless to say, I had a bad day that day. I did. I had a very bad day. Right? Bad day. I thought it was slick, right? I thought I'd get away with that. That didn't work out too well. Who does that? Anyway, that was the first time I got caught in my antics, right, because I really needed some. You know how when you're young like that, rest is everything. It is. It's everything. It's like rest is heavenly when you're young like that. And so I had to have my rest. So those glasses were like an insurance policy. And that was the first time I got chewed out in front of my peers the way I did. But I, I was uh, never did that again. And wouldn't you know it, when I got older, right, I was the guy up there giving a safety brief to everybody else, and I caught somebody do the exact same thing. The only thing I could do was chuckle. That was the only thing I could do was chuckle. Uh, but yeah, just, I'm not the only one that did that. Evidently, it's a, it's a, it's always a group of people who do that same thing. Always. That, and that, that's amazing, isn't it? Now, as far as today's military is concerned, not sure of that. But uh, and as far as how the farm is now, no, no, not the way thing or, or silver dust. Not not the they don't do that in those locations now. But um, yeah, back then we had some antics, and everything was so serious back then. So serious. Hey, right, folks, I'm out of here. I'm gone. God bless each of you. I can't wait to speak to you guys tomorrow. But, Lord willing, we'll be back here tomorrow talking. God bless you guys, Lord. Keep you stay vigilant. Look after each other. Pray for one another. Right. And above all things, above all things, 
us get out of the spirit of accusation into the spirit of lifting people up. And remember, this, this your life is a process, right? This is your father's process. This is not your paradise. This is a process. Remember that and be at peace. God bless you. We'll see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.